Hello, Robert, and happy to talk with you today. Um, I understand that you're very critical regarding Erlander Haraldson's latest edition of his book, Modern Miracles. And could you tell me the main reasons for this? Yes, indeed. The main problem is his claim that the alleged miracles of Sai Baba have not been proved to be fraudulent, never been proved to be fraudulent. Mm. True. In this latest revision, the book was originally titled Miracles Are My Visiting Cards. In this, in this version, Harrison claims, amazingly in view of the thousands who have left Sai Baba and many who have publicly reported fraud in materializations, that he found no evidence of fraud, slate of hand or anything like it. Hmm. This is really serious and misleading, as it's entirely untrue. In an attempt to defuse this criticism, he wrote, asking dissidents to contact him with information of fraud. However, among all dissidents, he is regarded as untrustworthy and a true believer in Sai Baba's alleged manifestation miracles, which he is now. Yeah, he is. He is also a dangerous person to those who are still being harassed by the remaining Sai Baba people, mm. dozens of whom I know, and previously there have been over a thousand people who didn't want their names used who have wow. contacted me or other dissidents to ask questions and tell what they know about Sai Baba. Harrison went to Sai Baba Ashram with a Dutch parapsychological associate, a Dr. Mm. Root, and stayed for over a month early in 2013 to confer with the remaining believers there. Oh. He has systematically avoided studying the massive testimonials and other documented evidence that has emerged from hundreds of well-informed former long-term followers of Sai Baba, of which I have told him on various occasions. So he failed to contact any of these available witnesses of fraud. Of course, many of them now have been spread to the winds, but there are still some. So he basically ignored a huge body of evidence against Sai Baba and proof that he wasn't doing the miracles. And he just ignored that and wrote in his book that it's never been proven that the miracles were fraudulent. Is that right? That is correct. And he wasn't really aware of the massive quantity of testimonials because he didn't even bother to look on the internet. He didn't take the trouble of reading my evidence and all my references to people in any detail. He listened to a few things which I said, but he didn't really follow up on anything. And he asked me about the BBC film which exposed such a Sai Baba, among other things, his false, his attempt to produce a lingam which he couldn't do in front of the BBC cameras. And yeah. I sent him a copy of the film on DVD, and mm -hmm. on two occasions uh, when he visited later, I asked him about it, and he hadn't seen it. Oh, no. <laughs> you see? But as soon as anything came up which he could use to support his agenda... Mm -hmm. Yes. That's uh, not very scientific at all. Now... Just to make sure that everyone knows that there are such things that we have evidence of, we have the incident of the watches which were donated to the ashram by Hans de Kraker of Australia, a dissident who has, has lodged a, an affidavit against such as Sai Baba for sexual abuse. And he had collected over a hundred watches that were donated by Australian devotees. When he was in the ashram, these were delivered, and then he met people who had those watches on, and he said, where did you get them? And they were materialized by such a Sai Baba. <laughs> Haraldson wow. has not contacted Hans de Kraka, and he's still contactable. He wants them to come to him. That was one case. Then there's another case with uh, the Psycho Watch story. It was a story which was obviously invented. 
the famous nuclear physicist devotee Dr. S. Bhagavantam reported that Sai Baba had materialized a unique psycho watch with a special serial number for a Japanese devotee. The head of psycho was said to have been at the ashram and seen the person with this very special watch. He was shocked because he always kept that watch in his safe in Japan. The story was embroidered considerably. Various prominent skeptics investigated the whole Bhagavantam story in full detail, eventually contacting the head of Psycho, who denied everything. He had never even been to India. This fraud was no hearsay, as Haraldson later claimed when confronted with the matter. There are videos. He has analysed one video, the famous video of Sai Baba with a chain underneath a tray. Do you remember? Where yes. he was fumbling yeah. that. He came to the conclusion that you can't prove from that that this was a fraudulent act. There are other cases of videos which he hasn't analysed or mentioned, hmm. which are much more damning than that one, and they are to be found on xbaba dot com where you can clearly see Zai Baba putting his hand behind his back into the, under a cushion to mis and meanwhile misleading attention with the other hand while he pretends to produce something. And diverse videos among others one which shows a Vibhuti pill between his fingers Mm. before he yeah. pretends to materialise. Then there are reports from a number of reliable people who have been had top posts in the such a side organisation, doctors of philosophy and social science and so on, who have seen Sai Baba lose pills on the ground when they were sitting in the privileged position of VIPs. Wow. <laughs> I know a friend that is an ardent devotee and during an interview she saw him she was sitting right by his chair and his hand as he was doing something else with his other hand uh, distracting attention she saw his hand beside her go into the cushion of the chair he was sitting in and pull out the ring and then transfer it to the other hand and pretend to materialize it and she's still an ardent devotee. She just said, it's his little Leela. It's um, his way of testing us. Isn't he charming? And he wants to test our faith like this. She didn't even consider that he's a fraud. No, it's very hard to do that when you're in that situation with 6,000 people sitting around praying to him and all the rest of it and all his staff standing around like like they might shoot you if you did anything wrong, you know. Oh, yeah. So anyway, another case, of course, is the case of Connie Larson, who Ellen Drew Harrison has met, and he has nothing but scorn for Connie Larson. Yeah. Connie Larson, when he was finally confronted by one of the Swedish devotees who had been sexually assaulted many times by Sai Baba, that this was not healing, this was not anything spiritual at all, it was sheer lust on Sai Baba's behalf. Mm. Connie Larson had to realise that the same thing that had happened to him was not wow. healing. And so he became a sceptic and he was with that boy in the interview because his, the boy's mother insisted on coming to Prashanti William to confront Sai Baba. And she did. Oh. She did in the interview room with her son and Connie Larson, when, and when Sai Baba went into the private interview room, Connie Larson went up to his chair, lifted up the cushion, and lo and behold, there were watches, rings. Oh no, <laughs> really? And the whole thing. And of course, no one can say what effect it had on the other interviewees, but oh my said, God. quite a lot of them probably didn't believe that this was anything else than a Leela or something like that. Yes. Yes, that's amazing. Well known to international humanists, Babu Gogineni is a secularist who is an expert on religious sects in India and very early on discovered the weaknesses of Dr. Andrew Harrelson's studies and, of course, of Sacha Sai Baba himself.